I'm Emilio Pasmino, and today I'm in Brazil, but not in the Amazon. I'm in the southeast region of the country, in the city of Sao Paulo, where years ago I called home. And today I'm visiting the state park Alberto Lofgren, also known as the Orto Florestal. It's a very beautiful park, and there's lots of animals for me to show you. But the main target today is going to be a furry friend of mine called the Capybara, which if you don't know what it is, imagine a guinea pig. Now imagine that guinea pig the size of an actual pig weighing about 200 pounds and living in water. That's the capybara. When I was here, I saw countless of them. But today, I've only got one day to try to find some and show them to you guys. Today's actually my day off. And I'm alone here, I've got no cameraman. So it's just gonna be mostly me vlogging and then showing you guys the animals. So the first animal you're gonna notice when you get to the park are gonna be the geese. Mostly domestic gray lag geese. And they're gonna be everywhere and they're gonna be very noisy. Really hard to miss. You've also got many turtles living in the lake. Mostly sliders and See that rock all the way over there? There's a lot of them. How many are them? That rock. Whoa, and they just fell. Wow, can't believe they're all there perched together. And on the one next to it, there's a lot too. There's also lots of koi fish, not native to Brazil, imported from Asia. Here we got the southern lapwing, known locally as the keru keru because of the noise they make. And while I love these birds, they're beautiful, I'm not gonna lie, they're the most annoying creatures here. I mean, it's because they seemingly never sleep. When they were around the house, they would make noises at every hour imaginable. I even saw them out once at 3 a.m. during a storm. I don't know how these birds seemingly do it, but they don't sleep. A cool thing about these birds is that they're very good parents. So let me see if I can zoom in a little here. It's not noticeable on this one, but these guys are gonna have spurs tucked beneath their wings They're like these little red thorns that they have that they use to protect their young from predators They're extremely common and you can find them pretty much anywhere in human graded habitat around this area They can be identified by their black face You know that little t tuft of feathers they have behind their head and they can fly, but they prefer to walk a lot. You're going to see them often on the ground. I rarely see them on trees. Here we have a common gallinole crossing the road. They're kind of the counterpart to the old world moorhen. We have gallinoles in Florida too, but they're usually very shy animals. Normally you can't get this close to them. But here in Sao Paulo, the rules are different. So here we've got another wading bird, the great white egret. And I can tell it's in the breeding season because its face has turned bright green. And it also has its breeding plumage, which are these really long feathers that grow out towards the back. I'm gonna show them to you right now. See, that's the breeding plumage. Also present is the great Kiskiri, known here as the Bemchivi. Then up here, we've got the Neotropical Cormorant. I don't know exactly what he's doing right now, but he's just there. Known as the Bigua. Both very common birds native to the area. Oh, a cormorant is hunting right now. Let's see. I think he got something. Oh, look at that. Wow, he got a really big fish. That's awesome. I wonder how he's going to eat it. At this point, it's becoming more of a bird watching video than a capybara video, given the lack of them. But it doesn't matter. This is still really cool. There he is. You know, it might be too big for him. I don't know. They're, they're very greedy. Sometimes they get fish that are bigger than they can swallow. Did he lose it? What, what just happened? Yeah, I think he lost it. Looks like it was too big. And here we've got a little straighted heron on the hunt for fish and guess who's behind her? Hang on, look over there. It's the capybara. We found him. 
I mean, there's only one right now. Sometimes they're going to gather in big groups of like 10 or 12. And he's pretty far away. He's in the middle of the river right now. He's eating. But at least we found one. Let's see if we can get closer. It seems this is as close as we're going to get. I'm on the other side of the lake. And now there's actually two capybaras. Here's the one we saw originally. And a new guy showed up. I was hoping they were going to be here, right on the shore. They're actually going to lay here sometimes. But that's usually in the early mornings and late afternoons. Given that it's midday right now, the sun is out and it makes sense that they're in the water. At night, what they'll do is that they're going to come out and graze on the grass. Which makes them very much like hippos. They're on the move again. Let's see where they go. Given where we saw the capybaras go on land, it should be around here somewhere. Let's look around and see what we can find. There we go. Finally. A capybara on dry land. Look at that. This fur is all wet. Oh, and there's the other one. As I mentioned before, the capybara is by far the largest rodent species, often weighing over 60 kilos. Their closest relatives are the guinea pigs, and they are somewhat related to agoutis. Given that they have so much meat on them, and are similar to guinea pigs in taste, you might be thinking, are they edible? The answer is yes, and there's a pretty funny historical anecdote involving this question. Sometime around the 18th century in Venezuela, European settlers noticed the capybara living in the area. Since most of them were Catholic, they weren't allowed to eat meat during Lent. However, they were able to convince the church back in Rome that the capybaras should be considered a fish because they live in water. And that is why even to this day, the capybara is a popular food during Lent in South America. Capybaras are perfectly adapted for a semi-aquatic lifestyle, possessing wet feet and being able to hold their breath for about five minutes. When they're not sleeping, capybaras spend much of their time grazing, both on land and in the water. In order to maximize the absorption of nutrients from their food, they are autocoprophagous animals, which is just a fancy way of saying they eat their own poop. They are social animals that often hang out in groups as a form of protection. When one sees a predator approaching, such as a caiman, a jaguar, or an anaconda, it lets out a characteristic bark that alerts the others. Despite being hunted by so many predators, they are very widespread, found in every country in South America except Chile. Their success is due to their fast reproductive rate and their ability to thrive in human habited areas, even in the middle of huge metropolitan cities such as Sao Paulo. Some capybaras are so tame that you can walk right up to them and even touch them, but I wouldn't recommend it as they carry a type of tick on their fur that are vectors for several diseases known to be fatal in humans. These ticks attract a variety of birds that will stand on the capybara to feed on them, such as the gallinals we saw earlier. The bird gets a meal, and the capybara gets free of parasites, making this a perfect example of a mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. Well guys, today was an awesome day. We got to visit this beautiful park, see many birds, much more than I expected, and to finish it all, this magnificent beast right here behind me. Bueno muchachos. Until next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new adventures by clicking the channel icon right above. Or click here to watch another video. And as always, thanks for watching.